So we had to walk like this eight plus mile hike back to the base, and I was black on ammo, and I had my two forty, and I was just I was fucking sucking. <laughs> and then the <laughs> second village we hit, I my my thing died before we could get to the second village, but there's places up there that we walk through and they had those fucking bodies there was like three truckloads full of bodies and they fucking hung them up on meat hooks in the fucking market in the middle of town because that was you know that was all their friends and shit and they showed them out like oh look what these americans did and special forces didn't have to fucking go back pilots picked them up so guess who had to walk through the village and see all these fucking people yeah. and so like you can really tell when like someone like like wants to kill you or like wants to hurt you um, and that's the first time I've ever like really really seen that look too, is um, walking through that village and like seeing all those like little body parts and like, dude, these guys like they got their foot their feet blown off and stuff. So there's like just feet hanging on the tables and like all this other shit, and um, just the look that those people like gave you, you know. And like I've seen them pointing like at the guns, and then at everything because we were switching off with the 240s. Because we don't want to fucking, you know, we took turns carrying the 240. Oh, yeah. And so what we were doing is when I got up to the village, I had the 240 again. And they're like pointing and whispering and like they're doing that. Like, I know it's like, oh my God. And they're like, I bet you it was that good and that chopped this person up or blah, blah, blah. And so you could really see that. And then we finished walking back to the base and like everyone was just smoked. And since I didn't have any water, like I remember I gave Vaya my 240. I was like, hold it, man. And I dropped in the shade. And like I cramped up and I started just like, I went straight like that. And so they gave me, they gave me double IVs and uh, like dot, the two medics out there like massaged me back down. And then, yeah, so that was, that was really shitty actually. It was really fucking hot out there. Um, yeah, it's a good view of the terrain. And yeah. You don't, you, you're in the Pasha River and everything just goes right straight up out of those valleys. It does. Oh, and we have a, man. I think some of the dudes out of Fort Hood, they were around in the area, so they gave us like security through a couple of the village, like the first part of the village, since we had to walk all the way back. And what they did was they met us at the beginning in the second village, and they let us hook up our rucks on their on their little um, like their cages, mm -hmm. and so they drove them for like a couple miles, and we got to walk without those. So that was fucking sweet. And then of course we had to ruck back up after that. Um, what else? So yeah. now you guys are you're wearing the interceptor vest. You do you have what just front and back back plates? Yeah. So we um. Okay. That's one of the things that we were talking about during all the streamlining. Some of the guys carried side plates if they like, um, like in weapon squad and shit. Those guys like we had to carry side plates. But if you were gonna go kick doors and you actually had to like go after an HVT yeah. and scale like you a, can't a move courtyard. All that stuff. Yeah. No. So mostly like all the like first squad and all those guys. They're the ones that were wearing um, no side plates that way. If we had to, like I said, they showed us like how to streamline gear to like yeah. climb up buildings and do all that shit. So um, if you were a door kicker, you didn't wear side plates. But if you were like on the guns or anything like that, we made them wear side plates. So that was fun. Um, what else? Oh man, that's the fallen angel strike. I got a couple bomb drops on here. Um, we had a couple of reporters come out. Well, actually, there was one reporter. He went out with us and Bravo Company. And so, let's see. This is where... This is Hammerdown. And Hammerdown was our big mission. So this is Bravo Company Firefight. This is where Lieutenant Del Castillo got shot in the middle. Um, so they called it the Gambier Jungle, that place that area that we were supposed to go into and then we got mixed because we were going to go in with elf company but since we were the big asset we were supposed to cover lz honey maybe. so and then i'll show you we'll, we'll get some of those helicopter pictures and stuff what else um oh i guess it would have went helicopter crash and then op shaw I think this is the same reporter. Yeah, this fucking black reporter. Is it him? But yeah, that's where Lieutenant, Lieutenant Dow got hit in there. Uh, he didn't make it through that mission. On that same mission, one of the dudes. Yeah, that's fucking guy. Um, 
One of the dudes that I had known from Hawaii, he was in Bravo Company. PFC Zach Herrick. He uh, got shot in the jaw. And uh, it's been hanging on. So he, he looks good now, though. He, uh, they fixed him up. They did a lot of plastic surgeries and stuff. He's good. And actually, um, I got someone contacted me like two days ago. He's a dude that wrote a book called like Dust Off 7 3 or something like that about what it's like to be a life flight medic and pick people up and never know what happened to them. And so this, he got a hold of us because of like, um, like helicopter crash and like he knew Herrick because he was actually the guy that person picked up Zach Herrick and stuff. Um, so that was probably like our biggest, like definitely heavy hit mission was hand in hand. And like the unit before us, it was uh, all the strong angle missions. What was it strong angle one, two, and three? Like those are really hardcore missions from 101. Um, so that would be like our our strong angle, or you know whatever would be hammered out. That that was our mission for us. Our uh, you know, uh, Bravo Company really really got fucked up. Um, Man, one of their officers fell and twisted his ankle, and he ended up getting like kind of backed out of the scene, like dude, twisted his ankle. Um, and so their first, their first time, a hardcore motherfucker, man, <laughs> like just a salty motherfucker. Mm -hmm. So he stepped up and he really he took control of everything, and they came back. Um, and on that same mission, our Alpha Company was in a different position than our FTF platoon, even though we were we were still Alpha Company for deployment, we were attached to. Mm -hmm. HHC, so we were like Havoc Company, but like part of the Alpha Company still, it was super weird, um, because we were a brigade asset, and so we went with the HHC element, and for Alpha Company, I remember hearing on the radios, um, that, ooh, ooh, what was his name, Captain H, Captain Heiliger? Maybe I think that's his name. But anyways, he went out with a small element because they went to airdrop some supplies into the Alpha Company, and this fucking guy just dropped him into the wrong position. And so you know, instead of staying back and be like, "Hey, I'm gonna make sure everything back here's all right," he's like, "All right, team, here's what we're gonna fucking do. You're gonna follow your CEO out here, and we're gonna get this shit." And so they go out there in the middle of the night, and what happens? Fucking Captain Hyder falls off a goddamn cliff and breaks like six ribs. Oh! And ouch. so, yeah, he's back with us after like mm, maybe like a week or two. He, he joins Alpha Company back up later, but I always thought that was funny, man. I felt bad for Bravo Company because like that dude like twists his ankle and he's like, I gotta leave Hammer down. And um, yeah, Captain Hyder broke his fucking ribs and shit. So you were basically an RC East? Yeah. Up around uh, Pesh River Valley, Quinova. Now, did you get into, like, uh, up, didn't you say you got up towards one not? We were in one not. Um, okay. I have some from Nangle. Like, that place fucking sucked, too. Oh, good old Nangle. Yeah. Um, Lovely place. Let's see. Yeah, and I don't know. You know, it was weird. I guess before that, we went to O.P. Shaw. So let's see if I can find it. Okay. One of the interesting things, I, I don't know if you heard John, if you heard... Adrian actually saw the Winot training video before they went to one. Before they went, that I developed. Oh, that was that was yours. That was mine. I helped develop oh, that at, at Fort Leavenworth. Yeah. I did all the research and helped develop and proof it. He, he, and he saw about it. it a lot. He saw it before he went. He had he used my video for training, which is just really cool. Yeah. Well, it is, and you know, he told me that when I first met Adrian. He told me that that yeah. we got to see the video of Winot. And uh, they have before I went in. Arrows and yeah. Like, yeah. yeah, see, I put that together. <laughs> yeah, and it's, you know, like I said. Yeah. Um, that's pretty cool. It, to me, it's cool that I actually help somebody, so. Well, you know, that's what it's all about. What was your unit? Uh, I was 235. 235, okay. Cacti. Cacti. Yeah, we got that. And so, actually, this OP Shaw mission is the mission that I got the unit coin from that I gave Stan Love. Um, so OP Shaw, like, it, it actually, thank you, kind of got, like, resurfaced again not too long ago. Um, 
So the medic, like I said, we had a sister battalion, um, a 227 FTF platoon. So an FTF group got took it from 235 and 227, like the top two performing platoons of, of the little battalion. Mm -hmm. So we got put together as an FTF battalion. Um, and so we would always go to a lot of different AOs, not just the 235 AO, but we went up to OP Shaw too. Um, and there was that thing, I don't know if I tagged any of you guys enough, but the medic who, uh, who saved all those people, and I think I told you that, that helicopter medic who got his head like yep. chopped off? Yep. Yeah, so that was 227, and that's when we were going up because we were replacing our um, sister battalion at a cell phone tower. Let's see if I can find this fucking thing. Um, so what had happened is we went up there to relieve some of these guys because they were getting fucking hammered, man. Um, they got, they almost got overrun once and that was right before um, the other FTF platoon went up there. So in the video they talked about how it was overran and stuff and how that medic saved so many people. I'm trying to remember where Shaw, Shaw wasn't in, or what was it called that when I was there? Where was Shaw at? OP Shaw? Oh man, I don't even remember where it was at. It was, uh... Okay. I have no idea where it was. I know it was OP shot. It was really shitty. Um, <laughs> oh, that's you're welcome. Welcome to every little cop in Afghanistan. Um, but yeah, so it was that was like October, sometime in October, and what had happened was the second the yeah second platoon of the FTF like group went up first. So there's a cell phone tower, like a mountain cell phone tower, halfway up was a cell phone tower. All the way up on the mountain was OP Shaw. Mm -hmm. And so they the way that they wanted us to run it was half and half. Half the platoon at the at the cell phone tower, half at the OP Shaw. And we were given the same orders as that um, platoon. And so one half was all the way up at the top already. And they started getting overrun. And they pushed those guys back down. They fucking schwacked those guys. They fucking smoked those dudes. And so after that, they started lobbing a bunch of mortars. And so what had happened was inside this cell phone tower compound, there's two buildings, um, like one on the left side and one on the right side, big open area, and then the cell phone tower. Well, there was positions on each building so you could look out down below into the valley because they, fucking Hodge ran up on like this side of the mountain and the cell phone tower was on this side of the mountain down here. So they missed those guys. And they were lobbing mortars over trying to hit the OP and they didn't hit the OP, but they, they launched too high up and came down inside the compound. So Sergeant Taylor was going to check on one of his dudes. I want to say it was like on the right building. And a mortar exploded and pushed his face to the back of the skull. And um, so when they were going to get Sergeant Taylor, you know, the, the medic got hit too. And so that, or uh. the, the helicopter medic, like he got hit. And so that medic was like helping those guys out too, and like so he puts on his body in there, and the helicopter medic and stuff. And so that dude, there's like stuff on him on YouTube or some shit like that right now. But we were up there right after that happened, um, and that was cool. That was the first time I got me General Petraeus too. That was um, that was pretty funny. Um, I got to meet him in 2005 in Baghdad. Baghdad? Yeah, he seemed pretty squared away. I mean, yeah, he was. You know. Yeah. My estimation, he was. Yeah, he was cool as shit to us. Um, is this it? No, that's not it. Sorry, I'm trying to find like the cell phone tower and stuff. So after that, I got promoted to E4 because there was like two like lower enlisted dudes. Because I, like I said, we got the same information. Like, hey, half of you are gonna stay down here at the cell phone tower, half's gonna go up. Well, I went up with um, Lieutenant Clayson. And because at that time we had switched PLs. Okay. Um, so I went up to Lieutenant Clayson all the way, all the way up that shitty fucking mountain one night. Um, and actually, this is probably where like my first thing of brain damage was that came in too. Is a no, that would be like second, second or third. Because it was Lieutenant Clayson that time. So I was walking um, in nods, you know, like uh -huh. I said, you can see really, really far away, but really up close. So I was looking down like this, and I was looking up close. Well, I should have been looking kind of farther away because I was about to walk up a cliff and I didn't know it. And so I had the 240 and I was like, okay, I got this. I got the And uh, like I fell 
right on my head, got stuck in between these rocks. And by one of my buddies, he had the M14, he was right behind me. He's like, yeah, all I seen was you drop straight to your head. I seen you kick a few times and flip over. <laughs> and then I seen you ching and fall down. Well, when I flipped over, something had got loose. And when I flipped up, I looked up with my nods and the 240 just whack, smoked me right oh. in the face and just fucked my day up. Knocked me out. I was out for like, I think it was like two minutes. Just oh, fucking man. done, man. Um, so after that, we had to climb all the way up the mountain after that. It was just like you took a George Foreman shot to the head or something. Yeah, and it and hit I mean, me like right that. in the nod. So like, oh, it, didn't, man. it didn't like really fuck me up. Like I had like, Is that what the scars are then? Or? No, that's, oh. from the, that's from the wreck. That's where oh, okay, yeah. my last pair of glasses broke my face. Okay, right there. got it. Um, but yeah, so that really fucked me up. That fucked my day up for like a couple of days. Um, so at the cell phone tower, like everyone's super tired. And that was like my first real mission as a team leader, like a new team leader. And so I was super squared away. I was like, fuck you. Yeah, I'm so fucking motivated. <laughs> um, and then like little by little on this mission did my, like my morals just, uh, just took one hit after another. And it very first started when I woke up that morning. Like, it was super cold, and no one thought to bring a blanket. Well, I brought my Whoopi, because I was like, mm, I'm going to want something to just keep me warm. So, it was myself and Dubas. He was the new RTO at that time. We were, like, cuddling in the middle of the OP, like, right in the middle of the open. And um, we had been asleep for, like, maybe an hour and a half to two hours. And these fucking dickheads from 227 that were up there, um, like Comanche element or something, and they put their mortars right next to our head. And every morning, what they would do is they'd shoot off mortars in a circle, do an like H around the mountain. Do an H and I, yeah. Yeah. So we were sleeping there, you know. Oh man, I'm so tired. I just worked so hard, and then just went dunk dunk, and we're like, oh, what the fuck was that? What the fuck was that? <laughs> and right after that, like we look up, and we were so close, like you could see the helicopter pilots' faces because they couldn't fly up past elevation. So like they would fly just right above us. And I remember looking up, and I was like, what the fuck? And I seen the helicopter pilot waving his head too, because like right after they did that. I laid there and I was like, what the fuck is going on here? And then they buzz us a couple times. Um, I'm going to use the restroom real quick. Yeah, go ahead. They, I, they I got, got pretty paranoid to keep talking to you. <laughs> from getting overran. Um, but yeah, that was like, I really want to find that because that was one of the first. So at that, at that point, you're still in weapons, right? Yeah, I was still in weapons squad at that point. Um, and so you, how many guys are you in charge of? Well, actually, no, 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 no. At this point, at this point, I was ooh, second squad, first or second squad, because I was under Sergeant Sherlock, and Sergeant Sherlock and Bedoy were both on lead, so um, Valle and myself were the two team leaders under Sergeant Sherlock, and so we took turns being like squad leader for like a week and then a week, and so that's why we both got promoted to E four after this, because essentially. We pretty much ran the OP by ourselves because it was us and then Lieutenant Clayson and then just a bunch of lower enlisted dudes because um, Sergeant Sherlock was on leave. Um, and Sergeant Giannopoulos was down at the bottom with the, with the weapon squad guys. Where the fuck was Sergeant Carroll? Sergeant Carroll wasn't there. Um, that's a good question. So yeah, um, so we went up with them taking turns, and technically, like, Vi was, like, acting squad leader at this point, um, but we were both E3s, so, we, we got up there, and, um, the first thing I really, like, remember, like, being up at OP Shaw was sitting up, it was a really beautiful place, I need to find these pictures, um, really, really beautiful valley, and I was sitting up by where the 240s were. And I was just kind of swinging my legs, kicking my feet, and I was talking to this dude who was uh, talking about, like, going through, like, all that shit that had just happened, like, all the bullets, like, riddled everywhere and shit like that. And I was like, dude, that's pretty hardcore, man. And he was like, yeah, because, like, he was smoking a cigarette, and I was smoking a cigarette, and we were fucking sitting there, like, kicking our feet, looking out the valley. He was like, we probably shouldn't be there, be here. And we were probably, like, probably, like, this far apart. And I was like, why is that? He's like, we're easy targets. I was like, huh? And, like, right after that fucking happened, you just hear, shut, 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 shut. And, like, right between us, like, there was, like, holes in the woods sitting between us. Like, what the fuck? And so he, I do about this way and he do about that way. And, like, I was like, oh, shit, dude, I see what you fucking mean. He's like, yeah. He's like, I honestly don't know why I was sitting up there with you, man. He's like, that was a fucking stupid idea. <laughs> and so I have this video somewhere on here. And it's, uh, these dudes getting into firefight with the 240. Well, the day, that night, they went back down to the cell phone tower. 
and then the second half of our platoon had walked up. So um, the next morning, General Petraeus came in, um, and it was pretty cool, you know, we, San Giannopoulos was in Ranger Battalion, and so like he knew how to work with like, um, like explosives and shit like that. Mm -hmm. So he, he was like, we're gonna build an LZ here, they're gonna, they're gonna lift stuff into us. It's gonna be great. We're gonna be doing the next people a big favor. And I was like, Son G, like, I wanna break this to you, but like, we don't have any C4 or anything to break any of this. He was like, Bullshit, do we have claymores? And I was like, Yeah, so we busted open a bunch of claymores and like, shaped them to like blow all these rocks out and stuff. And so we were blowing them, and then eventually we got like this little like bobcat thing uh -huh. blowing into us. And so we were working on it, and we work, and we get shot at, and we shoot back, and we like dig some more, and we get shot at, and we fucking move around that little bobcat, and then we shoot the bobcat, and fucking, ah, you motherfuckers! And so like after an entire day of that, General Petraeus came in, and I was back again with the 240 where we just got in that last firefight, and once again, Abity. Oh, I didn't tell you about Abity. The first real knock to my moral was when I woke up that next morning after like the helicopter and everything, and Abity was like, uh... Puppet and Hera, I don't want to tell you this, but I didn't bring any extra socks or any extra shirts or anything like that. And I'm really sweaty from the night before and I'm really cold and now my feet are just really soaked. And I was like, all right, Abity, well, you're my dude, so I have to fucking give up my shit to you, so here you go. I was like, here's my shit, man. And so I was really upset with Abity the entire fucking time throughout this entire day. So what happens, um, they're like, yeah, we got someone in, come see us, blah, 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 look alive. And they're like, it's General Petraeus. So like, everyone obviously like, put their helmets on and stuff. I'm like, ugh, look. Like, we're doing what we're supposed to up here. And I look over at Abity. I was like, all right, Abity. I'm going to put you on the 240 right now. And he was a saw gunner. And he's like, bro, look, the saw. I was like, all right, Abity. We're going to put you on 240 now because the saw's not going to reach across the valley. I was like, just listen to me. And then um, we had, fuck, what was it? An AT4? No, we had a law. We had a law in our position, too. Good Lord, you still had a law. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> and so I was like, all right, Abity. Well, that was law like, was probably older than you were. Oh, definitely. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> definitely. Um, and so I was like, all right, Abity, whatever you do, like, don't try to shoot across the valley with the law. It's not going to work. I was like, we're going to have to use an AT-4. Like, it's just not going to reach that distance. And so we start getting contact. Right after General Petraeus comes in, he's like, oh, hey, I'm here for like five minutes. Um, we got like a little, little bit of contact, like not even the full like 45 seconds worth. Whenever you first landed, just kind of testing this out. And so we started shooting back on the 240s and stuff. But as soon as he left, like, they fucking hit us hard. And I remember looking up, and Abity was on the 240, and he was like, we're out of ammo. I was like, all right, Abity, blah, 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 like this. And then we ended up switching positions, so he was going to get ammo. And then I was like, fuck this. I was like, give me an AT-4. He was like, but we don't have an AT-4. I was like, give me the fucking AT-4. And he was like, la. And I feel really bad about this part because I looked down and I was so fucking pissed off at him already when I was like, give me an AT-4. And he knew specifically that that law was not going to fucking reach where it needed to. He's like, law? It's like, I fucking kicked him in the head. I was like, get the fuck out of here, Abity. <laughs> and so like, he's like, Ugh. And so he just kind of hung out down there. And I felt bad after that. I, I said sorry after that. But I was like, listen, dude, like I told you before, this wasn't going to work. Like, So, yeah, that was pretty cool. Um, and that was also the first time, like, um, I slept in a body bag, and that was a really weird experience, too. Because um, once again, like, we were supposed to be out there for, like, two days. And we ended up being out there for, like, four or five, which you know, is pretty usual. Um, but we knew we were going to hike up this big-ass mountain, so no one had packed, like, sleeping bags and all this heavy shit. Yeah. So it started raining really bad up there. And I was like, you know what? I was like, Doc, I'm so fucking sick of being wet, dude. I'm just so fucking sick of sleeping on the goddamn dirt. I was like, dude, do we have anything that's waterproof? He's like... Well, I heard that uh, body bags are waterproof. And I was like, yeah. He's like, I got two over here. I was like, I don't give a fuck. Give them to me. <laughs> and so, like, in the middle of the night, like, Doc and I put out these body bags. And, like, we're sleeping in and stuff. And, yeah, dude, the next morning when they woke up, they're like, what the fuck? Oh, my God, what the fuck? And we wake up, we're like, what? 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 And they're like, why the fuck are you guys sleeping in body bags? And like, that's such bad luck. That's such bad luck. And I was like, oh, my God. And I started thinking about it. I was like, dude, that's kind of morbid, man. Like, probably shouldn't have been sleeping in a body bag like that. But, hey. It kept me warm, man. It, it wasn't like 100% waterproof, but it's way better than what could have been. Um, I also ate like maggot goat meat on that mission. That was pretty disgusting. 
So after like two days, like I was like, man, like I don't want to eat an MRE. Like I'm so fucking sick of eating MREs. I'm not gonna eat. And so Hodge got like a shipment of like rice and like fresh vegetables and stuff up to him. And so my buddy Kroom and I were like, you know what, dude? Like let's just uh, let's get some of this food. And Kroom was like, this little cute dude from Wisconsin with like blonde hair and blue eyes. This little petite dude. <laughs> And man, these Hajis fucking loved him. <laughs> they thought yeah. he was the oh, cutest yeah. little boy oh, in the yeah. world. <laughs> yeah. They wanted to make sweet, sweet man love to Kroom. <laughs> and so I was like, Kroom, uh, I was like, why don't you go over there and bribe him for some rice? He's like, what do you mean? I was like, listen, man, they like you. If you ask for some rice, they'll give you some fucking rice, man. <laughs> and so he did it once, and he comes back with like three pieces of foot bread and like this big ass bowl of rice and goat meat. And we're like, fuck yeah, man. <laughs> and so him and I just devoured this. And I was like, man, that was so good. And I don't like goat meat. Like, initially, I just don't. I was like, that goat meat tastes like really funky. I was like, but whatever, man. It's good. Better than MREs. And so he goes back and gets like another half bowl with like two more pieces. And we're like almost completely done with it. And like, I grabbed this piece of goat meat. And I went to shred it in half, throw it in my mouth. Shred it in half. And there's this fucking mag and and I wanted to throw up, and I looked down, and I was like, dude, we just ate like a bowl and a half of rice. I was like, fuck it, man. And so I ate that. I just threw it in there. I was like, hey, dude, I've, been, I've obviously eaten like a billion of these motherfuckers. Yeah, yeah the one more is not going to hurt you. Yeah. Yeah. Those yeah. are solid protein. Yeah, I need to find this. Um, so OP Shaw, that was pretty shitty. It was pretty fun. I got in trouble because um, I made our medic into a firefighter with us, and apparently that's not supposed to happen, right? Like anything over a five, five, six. Well, I put him on the 50 cal up there, and um, this was right around, um, right around when I got my the toe kill that we were talking about. So, on the last day that we were up there, we started getting contact again. And it was this little collot that we had had our eye on because there was like a lot of like vehicles coming in and out and stuff. Mm -hmm. And the guys before us told us that they thought something was up. So we were looking for these guys, and sure as shit, man, we started taking contact from these little co-ops. And um, the dudes, I was the only one that knew anything about the, the tow missile because lo and behold, one of the dudes gave Agent a crash course. He's like, all right, you kill him like this, you reload it like this. You good? And I was like, I'm good. And that was all I got uh, for training on that. And so obviously, since I was the most experienced with the tow, <laughs> they put me on the tow. Um, and so we started taking contact, and we're like, no, how that collot? And so I get my toe ready, and I'm like, all right, toe out. And it's like, toe out. And so the first one I shoot, I see it, it's like, Whoo. And then I'm like, all right, all right. And I'm guiding it on the screen, and the next thing I know, I look up, and that missile's not going where it's supposed to go to on the screen. And I was like, the wire broke, the wire broke. And sure as shit, it just, bam. And fucking smoke some random house, and I don't know. Whoever was there must have been in the wrong fucking place at the wrong fucking time for them. Um, but that second one, sure as shit, man, I smoked the shit out of that house. That was fun. Um, but yeah, that was kind of, I, I did feel kind of bad about that, man, because there was like, there was a kid there and that other co op. But, what can you do? Wire broke, man. Yeah. That's, yeah, you know, that's, that's what you can do about that. That's what the PI had to say, too. But right after that, we got into another firefight, and I was on the complete opposite end this time. And so I had my. Fuck, what are they? They're not 203s now. 320s? They're like little pistol shape. And uh, I'll have to show you. They're like pistol shape, and they're just like a 203. But they have a grip on them like that now, and you can detach them and walk around. It looks like a big giant pistol. Oh, gee, that's nice. That's not something, um, something I'm familiar with. Yeah, so that was my, that was my like, weapon of choice whenever we got those 320s was that thing, because it was so fast to reload. You shoot it and hit that little button. It's like, tink, and you keep doing that. And um, so I went through like almost a case and a half of those fucking 320 rounds in one firefight. I was like, yeah, this is so much fun. Are they 203 rounds or are they? Smaller? Yeah. No, yeah, 203. Yeah, that's what they're, not 320. Okay. But the 203 rounds, the same round. Yeah, um, 40, just 40 like millimeter. A, yeah, it's just a fucking weird little like pistol shape now, which is ah, weird. Okay, I'm not familiar with that. I have to look that up. Yeah, so I was like, um, I was sitting there and I was like, Doc, I was like, make yourself useful, man. He's like, what? I was like, hop on that 50 cal. He's like, really? I was like, no one's going to see you, man. And sure as shit, as soon as he fucking pops off a couple of rounds, the ten of clays and walks around the fucking corner to see how we do it, <laughs> and sees Doc shoot on the fifty cal, so I got bitched out for that. <laughs> we had our medic on the fifty cal on our own beef for most missions. Let's see, and I don't know, man, <laughs> in Iraq. <laughs> and I didn't know up until that point. I didn't know that was like frowned upon. Well, in Afghanistan, yeah, that must be some new rule of engagement because 
The yeah. tenth didn't. I mean, they it's not like Hodge knows or respects Max. No, right? No, they, they, they don't, don't care. care. Yeah, they don't care. They're not signatories to. They're going to shoot. They're going to shoot. No, they're going to. They're going to not even a country. They're going to shoot and kill whoever they can. Right. Yeah. Um. That's your so answer. yeah, we did that, and Opie Shaw was. Um, it was really shitty, but it was really fun. It it was kind of like it really psyched us out a little bit hearing those stories about like. Um, the people before us that got overran and shit. And of course, like, especially in that era, you fucking hear that a lot. Oh, yeah. Like, they, you they fucking had, hear that a lot. They had, some, they had some bad... Yeah. They had some... There's been some bad contacts in that place. Yeah. I mean, and those dudes... Dudes up there, you don't... You know, the problem is you don't even know who they are half the time. It's it's, it's all... It's, I, I walked, talked to our intelligent folks and said, give me an order of battle who you're fighting. And they just threw up their hands. And they right. said... They said, well, these guys and these guys and these... And sometimes it's the drug cartels and sometimes it's the gem cartels. We, we can't really tell yeah. for sure, though. They said, they said it could be anybody or it could be somebody else that came in. And that's what sucks, too, is because... <clears throat> I don't know, I guess the one thing that I would, like, if I could compare it to any war, it would probably be, like, Vietnam. In, in the sense that you don't know who you're fighting. Yeah. You know? Because, like, they're, they're goat herders. You know, in the middle of the day, in the middle of the night, they're fucking yeah. in an IED hole. Um, and so yeah. that does that does kind of weigh on you. And, um, you know, at least for me, like, I thought about it a lot. And maybe it gave me, like, a little bit of resentment towards some of those people because, man, just day after fucking day after fucking day after fucking day after fucking day. 365 days. It's the same fucking thing. Kids, yeah. women, and it sucks, man, to say that you can't trust any of them. But like, well, it, even the, even their own people can't trust them because yeah. in, in Afghanistan, there's no lo- It's just a, it's the loyalty that works for today. Yeah, and you might be there might be your best buddy today, and next week, pfft, yeah, and that's the part and, that sucks. And that just drives you crazy. It drives you. It drove our guys crazy at Tenth Mountain because, you know, <laughs> you don't know who's. I mean, it just becomes very frustrating. Yeah, like, yeah. who's a genuine person? And so I guess for me, like, that would be... If I could relate to any more, that's what I would relate it to. You know? yeah. Because it's not... I don't know, it's almost, like, not fair. They're like ghosts, man. I do remember saying that a lot. Those motherfuckers are like ghosts. Sometimes you had them um, hiding, like, way deep in the mountains. And sometimes those motherfuckers would swarm you. Um, and so I guess this would be a good time to segue into... The helicopter crash. I really want to find this OP Shaw stuff, man. Um, June. June. Something. I don't even know. Maybe the 30th? I don't fucking know. Oh, sorry. Let's see if I can get this up. If it wants to cooperate with me. Um, man, I gotta, I gotta be in Fort Casper at, well, in an hour. So Alright, cool. this is too easy. Um, so, during Operation Hammerdown, like I said, Alpha Company was split up from us. We were supposed to be holding down a place called LZ Honey Eater. Um, and what our mission was, is we were supposed to disrupt the movement from all these fucking assholes coming in. Man, yeah, that shit looks fucked up. Yeah. Um, and so, it was right after the mountain passes had cleared up, you know, opened back up, so everyone was eager to get back in Afghanistan and do some fighting. Um, let's see if we can find a decent one. That was our interpreter. He's pretty fucking cool. Um, and so, like, everyone was just, like, super eager to do fighting. And where we were, um, we were supposed to be in a hub, right? Because there's all these mountain pass trails that lead into this one central hub mm-hmm. from like Chechnya and Pakistan and all these fucking different goddamn crazy paced places or whatever. Um, the, this was like the center hub. And so all these paths led back into like different places in Afghanistan by where we were. So we were right in the middle. That was LZ Honey Eater. It was that central place right there in the Highlands. And I don't know, man. I've heard a lot of different things. And, um, 
people are going to believe different things about what happened, but what I think happened, what to me makes the most sense, is, um, why is it like an updraft that the helicopter creates? Because we were overloaded. Mm -hmm. um, not a lot of people like to admit that either, especially when you're high up in command. We were overloaded, especially with body bags and stuff. Um, and it was way past elevation. I forgot what elevation we're at, but I, I actually had to leave this mission and so did a couple other people because we got elevation sickness and it just yeah. fucked us up. Um, but like, we were upright and we were getting ready to come down. We were like 107 feet in the air, getting ready to land because we were chalk too. Chalk wasn't already landed. They pushed out. They had their crew and they're secure. We were coming down, and um, the next thing that I can remember. I remember looking up, like, I don't know what it was, like, forest, like, there was some fucking random crazy forest, and, like, you know when you're, like, on a, a roller coaster or something, you hit that point where you just, uh -huh. like, float up? Well, I remember looking up and just seeing, I thought it, like, everyone was fucking dead, man. Like, because everyone was floating up like that, because we were... Probably negative G's. Yeah, we yeah. weren't in control anymore. Like, we, we weren't <laughs> going down as slow as we needed to. <coughs> Sorry about that. So... I look up, and everyone looks dead. Like everyone, everyone's like head is down like this, and arms up. And that's the last thing I remember besides like Bedoy. He was sitting next to me, and he was like, "Yeah, get up, we gotta go." And I was like, "Ah!" Oh. And like I like kind of shook myself, and there was a fire, and I was like, "Fire? What the fuck? Like that's really weird." And so like I went to like get out of the helicopter like normal, and I looked, and there was like no fucking helicopter there. You know, like where we were sitting, like there's no one back in the helicopter. So we fucking crawled out that part. You were in a Chinook? Yeah. Okay, I was going to say, that's a, that is one seriously fucked up Chinook. Yeah, um, and that's, that was, uh, at the time, Captain Blum, he's Major Blum now. He was our battalion commander. He was our battalion commander in Alpha Company, and then switched to HHC, and then we switched to HHC, so he was our battalion commander again. Um, oh, no. Oh, yeah, yes. Man. Um, so that's where they scraped him. So some people said that they thought the National Guard pilots had clipped a tree and went down. But what I think would happen is when we start coming down, one, we were way above elevation for where we were supposed to be. Two, we were overloaded. And so when we were coming down, that created that negative space and that updraft, and that's what we hit. Yeah. In my opinion, that's what I think. You know, I've heard people say that, like, we were taking contact when we went down, or, you know, people hit the... Yeah, that, looks like, looks, a, like, that looks like a blade strike. Yeah. Um, but I think, like, as we were coming down, because it didn't, it didn't happen all the way up, just in one part, so I think what happened is we were coming down, we might have hit a negative pocket of air from being like yeah. overloaded and stuff. Um, that was his turn. Um, and so these are our fighting positions. Go, go back. Yeah, that's like that's the carbon fibers from the blade. Yeah. yeah. That means that blade got shredded, man. Oh, yeah. And I remember Sergeant Kale and Kroon were in a fighting position. And this is what he told me. He was like, when they seen it, Kroon looked up and he was like, oh, fuck. And Sergeant Kale was like, it just turned into a long fucking day. Yeah. And yeah, sure as shit, man. That turned into... That was a pretty defining mission. Um, so these are some of our guys. And, uh, like I said, we were up on the high ground. And this is to the point where it gets to be kind of shitty. Kind of. Um, one, we weren't expecting this. And so we were really... It was pretty hard for us. So, <clears throat> there's our RTO. And it got so fucking cold up there because we were, we were way, way above yeah. elevation. Um, and so, like, four people got um, elevation sickness. But it was so cold that we were cutting off our socks and, like, putting them on our arms and, like, putting them around our necks because we had nothing else. Because um, we, were, we were just seriously supposed to be there for, like, not even six hours. And yeah, back long out. enough to get the airplane recovered or the bird recovered, right? Yeah. And, um... Yep, turn up being a couple of days. Living Chuck, that he got so sad after the second time. So the helicopters came in, and we just started taking such heavy contact that they couldn't come get the, like Rodriguez. Rodriguez broke his leg. Um, Mendez messed up his back. He has really bad brain damage. But Doy messed up his back. Kubiak broke his arm. Um, Son Smith, our platoon son, he fucked up his back pretty good. Um, it was kind of funny. I do remember. <coughs> I, because I just sat there. I'm not gonna lie. Like after I crawled out, I just fucking sat there and I grabbed my legs and I just fucking like no one walks away from a fucking helicopter crash yeah. like that. But like in real life, that shit doesn't fucking happen. 
Like, you don't just walk away from fucking No, you're, you're your brain right. scrambled, man. Yeah, and so I just sat there and I looked at it, and I was just like, like, it just didn't make sense to me. Like, I couldn't fucking piece it together what was actually going on. Um, and so it really sucked to seeing helicopters come in to give you air support or do whatever and not be able to fucking make it to you uh, to pick up your dues that really, really need to be um, picked up. Like I was saying, like, Rod, he was crawling out of the vehicle. And I remember sitting there, and Abity and Bedore were, like, going to get him. And his leg was all fucked up, and he was all bloody and stuff. And the only thing he mustered up was, like, Rod, are you okay? And he's like, Fuck.